you're living with your friends. Yeah. What are you going to cook me for tea? Um, I look like something like super healthy. Okay. Like um, like like salad or. Oh, nice. 24-year-old Ellie is hoping to move out soon. She has Down syndrome and type 1 diabetes, and finding a place of her own has been a dream years in the making. Hi, this is my bedroom. This, of course, my cute table for my boyfriend. And this, me, me and mum. Ellie had sort of three main ambitions to um, both wants to fall in love. Second one was to get uh, a job that was paid, and the third one um, was to leave home. And how are we getting on with those? So, the first one, um, big tick, Ellie fell in love, didn't need any help with that. Um, second one, a little bit more challenging, she has a contract, a, a paid um, job, that's been an amazing experience for Ellie. Finding accommodation and living independently has um, become more of a challenge. I just want my own space and uh, hang out with the best time of, of my life. I just want to be more independent. Ellie will still need someone on site to help look after her when she moves out. At the moment, young people in her situation can apply for housing through their local authority. But learning disability charity MenCap says up to 75% of adults with a severe learning disability are still living with family, meaning thousands face the upheaval of losing a parent and a home at the same time in the coming years. For Jane, the situation came to a head when she got some bad news. For most people with um, a child, young adult with disabilities, uh, the, the big concern is as you get older and that you want to know that they're going to be safe and looked after and have the right support around them. Um, and a couple of years ago, I was diagnosed with um, cancer. So that propelled me and inspired me even more to um, really make sure that Ellie had what she wanted for the future. The solution Jane found was pioneering. A group of families nearby, many old school friends of Ellie's, were looking to start a housing cooperative. It's a type of shared house used by like-minded groups, such as those hoping to live off-grid together. In Ellie's case, the hope is she'll share a home with an established network of friends. They can help each other with cooking and day-to-day -day tasks and have the security of a live-in carer there too. One of those she'll be living with is 26-year-old Ellen. Paris. And how do you make it? Ellen's mum, Alison, also started planning after she too was diagnosed with a serious long-term illness. It's brought things up when, because I've had periods when I haven't been particularly well. Um, and that's tough, isn't it? You didn't like it, understandably. Ellie's... Um, She's a quiet young lady when she's in company. I, I, le I have t two cats and I, l I, live, I live at home with my mum and dad. I'll show the, the one with the felting that you did. So when did you do that? Loves Lego. And loves Disney. Just lots of fun. Really good company. And enjoys her life. After almost seven years of work, Alison, Jane and the other families believe their children are just months away from completing the legal process to form a housing co-op. From there, they'll be able to bid for housing grants to build a home of their own without the families having to put in any money themselves. It's something they're hoping could help to lead the way for others. This is about home for life, it's about where you would settle and it would be your home for the foreseeable future. But these are vulnerable young people who can't live on their own, need the support, and that's one of the things that Ellie's often said to me, um, you know, who's gonna look after me when you're gone? 
and she sees how life is difficult for many people and um, yeah makes her anxious I suppose so we want to make sure that she knows what the future holds for her and that it's safe. Oh, thanks to 